Welcome to the Dr. Geo Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Geo, where it is my intention to help you with tools and information on how you can improve your urological health and live better with age. Today, we're going to talk about lifestyle and prostate cancer. Here's what's interesting. A recent study in a major European journal of urology confirmed the following. People who are have a predisposition to prostate cancer, so these are men, with a prostate cancer predisposition genetically, but who also follow a good and healthy lifestyle, and we're going to dig deep into that a little bit in terms of what that means, have a 45% reduction in developing aggressive prostate cancer or the type that can actually kill you. These lifestyle approaches work at a cellular level. It changes the microenvironment. It creates a microenvironment in the body that's hostile to cancer cells. That is the goal. So when a oncologist or urologist asks me, hey, man, I saw your patient. He's doing great. And how do you treat prostate cancer with natural methods and lifestyle? I said, well, I, I don't know how that I'm treating prostate cancer, but I am treating the individual. I am treating the biological soil. I'm treating the terrain. And if you treat the terrain, there's less likelihood of progression of prostate cancer and even development. And if you really are interested in getting detailed information about everything related to lifestyle and natural things to do for prostate, you should be already a member of the drgeo.com community and sign up to that newsletter. With regards to the study, they focus a lot on diet and exercise. Once in my experience and in my total research that I've done with this notion of creating a microenvironment that's hostile to cancer, you have to include good sleep and you have to include targeted and focused nutraceuticals like the ones that we talk about at xywellness.com, for example, which is focused for prostate cancer nutrition and lifestyle. What I would suggest is physical activity and physical exercise about four to six hours a week. This is for prostate cancer prevention and even colon management and even therapeutic aspect of exercise for prostate cancer is four to six hours a week with moderate to high intensity. A little bit of a huff and puff, a little bit of sweat, get the heart rate up. As it relates to strength training and weight resistance, you need to Challenge yourself with a little bit more weight. For example, if you're lifting 20 pounds and you do 25 repetitions and you still think you could do 25 more, that weight is too light. Okay. Intensity as it relates to strength training is challenging yourself with a little bit more weight that you have to push or pull. A plant based diet seems to be the best diet for prostate cancer specifically, that includes a lot of crucifers like broccoli, cauliflower, and these types of things. You want to include fish, primarily salmon. There seems to be protective aspects to salmon. But as importantly, I find that it's not only what you eat, but when you eat. So you want to make sure that you do some sort of fasting every day from 12 to 16 hours a day. So giving your body a break from not eating at all is anti-cancer, and there's anti-cancer benefits from that. How about sleep? Sleep is essential for many reasons. In fact, your metabolism revs up when you're sleeping. So your body goes to work when you sleep. So sleeping, hey, Dr. G, there's no way I could do eight hours a night. I'm not asking you to do eight hours a night, but what I am asking you to do is have a routine where you go to sleep around the same time and wake up around the same time. Studies show that that's probably even better than just eight hours a night. Roughly about seven hours a night works very well for most people, and the quality of sleep becomes very important as well. And that seems to have anti-cancer properties. For example, oftentimes night shift workers have a higher propensity to prostate cancer and even advanced prostate cancer than those that don't. Sleep is important for your immune system to lower inflammation, which is all contributory to prostate cancer development and progression. We don't want to just not die from prostate cancer. We want to die from nothing prematurely, right, at, in a young age. And we want to live optimally, cognition, brain power, you know, strength, fitness for as long as possible. 
And you can have it all with lifestyle medicine and certainly the lifestyle medicine that I'm proposing. Thank you so much for listening. If you are a prostate cancer, I I don't like the word survivor. (laughs) If you are a prostate cancer thriver, I would urge you to go to drgeo.com, sign up, and also look at xywellness.com and sign up to that. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll talk to you next time. This is Dr. Geo signing off. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the Dr. Geo podcast. You can watch all episodes of this podcast and much more by subscribing to my YouTube channel on youtube.com forward slash Geo Espinoza ND. If you love what you heard today, you can help by leaving a five-star review of the podcast on Apple and Spotify, as each review helps us reach more men who are serious about improving their urological health and how to function better with age. And for the latest research and actionable takeaways in the world of men's health and integrative urology, sign up for my newsletter at drgeo.com. I'll see you next time. And now for a brief disclaimer, this podcast is for general information only, and we're not forming a doctor-patient relationship through this medium. The use of the information and all links associated with this podcast is at the listener's risk and is not to replace medical advice from a physician or a healthcare practitioner. Lastly, thoughts and opinions related to this podcast are my own and may not reflect the views of any institution or organization I'm associated with.